of Deuteronomy, the first chapter and the sixth verse, have you overstayed? Yes, sir. All right. Have you overstayed? Oh my God, Jesus. You that have in your Bibles in Deuteronomy, the first chapter, beginning at the sixth verse, beginning at the sixth verse, and we're going to see what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us on today. In the sixth verse, the Lord our God, the Lord our God, speak unto us in whole air, saying, you have dwelt long enough in this mountain. You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Turn you and take your journey. Yes, sir. Go into the mount of the Amorites, unto all the places nigh thereunto. Mm -hmm. Notice what it says. The place is nigh and there unto. Into the plains and into the hills and, and into the vales and into the south. By the seaside into the land of the Canaanites and Lebanon and the great river, river the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. Ask your name of the questions or have you overstayed? The Lord our God speaking to us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough, which means you have overstayed. Now, this is pertaining to all of us spiritually, not naturally. I'm not saying to any one of you today to make any type of geographical moves. Yes, sir. It ain't for you to say I'm going home and even though, and, and to pack up and I'm going to leave. It is not to say I'm leaving my church. It is not to say that. Yes, sir. Spiritually, many of us have dwelt long enough at a spiritual level. Yes, sir. At a spiritual realm. That God is not pleased with anymore. Frustration is setting in. Frustration is coming. Even God himself understand what the Bible declares in Revelation when God was speaking to the church, to the churches, the seven churches of Asia. When God was speaking to them, and one of the things that God says to one of the churches, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes, sir. And if any man would hear my voice and open the door, I would come in and sup fellowship with him and he with me. God was not talking to in this particular uh, uh, text, he was not saying to the sinner, Behold, I said it to do or not. He was not talking to the unregenerated man. He was not talking about those on the streets and those on the corner and the backsliders. And he was not talking about the drug dealers and the alcoholics. He was talking to church folk. Amen. Yes, sir. And the reason he was talking to church folk is because of the fact they was in a place that they no longer could hear God. They could not discern the voice of God. He said, behold, I stand at the door and 
knock. If any man would hear my voice, it's a knocking voice. Yeah. It's a knocking voice. God is knocking at the doors of our lives. So I want to re-enter. Yes. Many church folks today have pushed God out. And now they are on their own strength, their own abilities, their own intellect, their own mindset. And God is nowhere in the equation. Then the Bible speaks that as God was talking to the church of Asia, and when God was speaking to them, he said, you, you have made me sick. Oh, he said, I'm at a stage of vomiting. Oh, and the reason God was at a stage of vomiting is because the Bible said, you was neither hot uh -huh. nor cold. You was lukewarm. And because you are lukewarm, it causes me to get sick, vomited. Yes, sir. I would rather for you to be hot or cold. I know what to do. I know what to do, Richard. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes. But since you are neither hot nor cold, you follow the fence. You don't want to. You don't know what you want to do. Go left or to go right. You don't want. You know what you want to do. Leave this alone or hang on to this. You don't know, go. Stop going here or keep going there. You don't know what to do. To go to church or get out of church. To worship me or to go somewhere else. You don't know what to do, and you at a stage in your life that not only the Father, richer than heaven, is frustrated. You have begun to get frustrated. That's right. That's right. Because you have dwelt long enough in the stage in where you are now spiritually. Somebody says spiritually. Your walk with God, your relationship with God should have grown as long as you've been with God and been in the church. Why is it that we still don't have any type of, 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 of a move of God in our lives even more than what we had years ago? Something is wrong. You should have been further in God than where you are now. Where is the gifts? of the Holy Spirit that should be operating in us. Where is the anointing? Where is the power of God to cast devils out? God did not intend to get saved and get filled with the Holy Ghost and remain where we are just by just speaking in tongues. That's not enough. We got to get more than that. We got to have something to offset the onslaught of the enemy and the devil that comes out of way. What do you have from God that you can do yourself when nobody else is around that you can stay on top yes, yes, yes. when you're not even around the church oh, hallelujah. when you're not even listening to the preacher Amen. Uh, yes. you should have heard enough preaching by now yes. hello yes. you should have heard enough of the word of God even the Holy Spirit dealing with you than to be where you are now in your walk with God that you can't do anything for yourself. Yes. When the Lord spoke it up, and, and, and I said to some of you before, it, it, it was kind of um, uh, mind-boggling to me when I first read this particular verse because of the fact the Lord it, it, it says to Moses to speak to the children of Israel, and he says to them uh, 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 unto Horeb, saying, you have dwelt long enough in this mount, in this mountain, which means, my friend, Horeb, and I have already for, amen, spoke to some of you about Horeb, is a holy mountain. It is the area what you call Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is the place where the burning bush was. Y'all remember that? When the voice of the Lord speak out of the burning bush when God spoke to Moses and Moses the ground that you stand on is holy ground. Take off your shoes brother because these are holy ground. The whole mountain is a holy mountain because the presence of the Lord was there and because the presence of the Lord was there Moses you're going to have to make some change 
places because you're in the place where the power of God dwells. That's how you got to take off. Once you get in a place, in, a, in the very presence of God, there's some things going to have to come off. Somebody said, come off. And so he was whole yes, yes. the holy place. The where? Holy where you are today in this church, it is called the holy place. It is the place where we come to worship, the place where we come with the presence of God here. Not that God, amen, present, it's just here. Hello, believers. But his presence is all over the world. But then God can be more in one place than he is in another place. What is that? His manifest presence. What is his manifest presence? I feel a miracle in my body now when somebody in Africa don't feel it. Even though it's the presence of God all over the world, but his manifest presence is with me. So he the Lord speaks when God did it and he began to speak this. He said the whole realm is the holy place. Look how many folks in, the, in Christendom, in the Christian community, all over the world, they're going to church Sunday after Sunday. And whatever time they attend, they're going to the holy place. They're going where? The they're going to the holy place. In the holy place is where you should spiritually mature. In the holy place is where you should climb into the heights of God. In the holy place is where an anointing shall rest upon you. In the holy place is where you devil down the devil. Devil, I dare you praise God because I know in the holy place I got power from on high. In the holy place, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Why is God calling Moses from where he was up on top of Horeb, of Mount Sinai? Yes. Yes, sir. Moses was doing his thing. What was Moses doing? Moses was at the bottom of the mount. Yes, sir. Watching over his father-in-law, sheep. He was around the holy place all the time. <laughs> he was around the church all the time. He shows up for this. He shows up for that. He do whatever the duties are in the church. Things are going the way the preacher would have it to be. Going the way the church would have it to be. Singing in the choir, singing in the preacher, dancing in the, in the church. And whatever you got to do. You, he, he was around the holy place forever. Mm -hmm. yes. He was around Mount Holy, Mount Sinai. But why is it that Moses did not have the fullness of what God called him to be? All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. You think you're around this mount and there is a calling, there is a destiny, there's places you got to go in me and you just going around the church and you've been doing this for years and years and years. What it is called? It is called the familiar. Yes, yes, yes. It is called the familiar. And what that happened to the body of Christ, y'all done got too familiar with the church itself. Where are we going to church? What's the name of the church? I'm going over here. I'm going over there. We done got familiar with the church and God said, and you done got so common, you done got so comfortable where you are. And God said, wait a minute. He's I'm a God that makes, that calls things to change. God don't like anything to remain the same. He don't like anybody to remain where they are. God is always increasing. God is always intensifying. God is always moving. God is not at a standstill. He is not stagnated. He is not stationary. He is always on the move. Yes, yes. I hear the Bible speaks of uh, Moses. Yes. He's around the church. He's working around the church. Watch it now. He watching over. Amen. Doing the things of his his father-in-law. But all of a sudden, God looks out of the heavens and said, Moses, come up. Yes. That's good. Yes, sir. 
But wait a minute. I'm around the holy place. Why are you calling me up? Yes, it is. He's a moment's come up. Well, 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 I'm okay where I am. I'm comfortable where I am. I'm familiar with what I am. When the Lord begin to speak and give me a word from heaven, he the son, I'm trying to move my folk from the familiar to the unfamiliar, from the common to the uncommon. God says there's more that you gotta have. There's more power you gotta receive. More anointing you gotta have. More glory to God. And the only way you can get from the familiar to the unfamiliar is to come up. The only way to get from the common to the uncommon is to come up. Some of y'all have been so familiar where you are in your walk with God. You don't want nothing else but to show up at church and to clap your hands and to stomp your feet. Am I talking to anybody? Oh, and many of you don't want anything from God but just to show and, and, and be and have a certain prestige in the community and on your job to know I'm a church goer, but God is not standing out. Folks just going to church. He wants some doers. He wants you to be a light not only in the building, but in your on your job, in your neighborhood. Hello. You got a neighbor, a neighbor. God is calling you up. He's calling you where? Uh, yes, Lord. Yes. Lord. Moses. Well, what are you saying here, God? He says, "Come up." But well, am I already in around the holy place and uh, the church? And uh, he said, "Yeah, yeah, you you around there, but you done been there too long." That spiritual state that you in, amen, you still got the same old prayer, the same old song, the same old shout, the same old amen, the same old lift of your hand. There's nothing greater in your life. And the devil is laughing at a lot of us. He is laughing at the preacher. He is laughing at those in the pews. Why? Because you have become no threat to the devil's kingdom. The devil knows that you don't have anything, amen, because you've been in the same spiritual rep for years. That's that's why the devil knows some of y'all like the back of your head, like you know the back of your head. Why? Because you're going over the same old, same old. What you doing? You've been in the common place. So the devil knows who you are. He know how you're going to act. He know your personality. He know what you're going to do. Because you have not come out of this place. You've been there forever. And God said, it's time to offset the enemy and come out of your familiar. We done said over and over and over, no more church as usual. But it is just a word coming out of a lot of Christians' mouths, even from preachers today. No more church as usual. But I, I constantly see you still doing the same thing. I constantly see you still got programs and the service is operating a certain way. We have no space for the Holy Spirit to take over. As a matter of fact, we want to keep the Holy Spirit in a box. That when the Holy Spirit start coming out, we shut the service down. Talking about we only go to church for 45 minutes. It don't take all of that. Y'all get what you got to get. Let's go home. The devil is a lie. The devil ain't got no time on the club. He ain't got no time in crack houses. He ain't got no time in other places of the world. The devil is out there 24 7. And the church has slowed up and backed back. God says, You have all the saved. There you are. And God said, He is spiritually frustrated over you. Because by now, you should be a general in the army. Right now, you ought to be such a threat to the enemy's kingdom. You ought to be able to go to the enemy's camp and bring somebody else out. But you go to the enemy camp and get stuck. You still trying to get over the fact who don't speak to you, who don't shake your hands. You've been in church too long. You done overstayed here. You should have been farther than where you are. 
Some of y'all should have been further yes. than last Sunday. Yes, yes, yes. My yes. God. That's so hard Yes. You should have came in here today from last Sunday. A man with a militant anointing upon your life. That if you come in contact with another brother or sister, they would feel the vibes of your anointing as upon you. But somehow we never, we let the devil rob us from Sunday to Sunday. We can't stay on top. God ain't calling us down. He's calling us up. Moses, come on! Oh, well, what's, well, what's on the agenda? Am I okay where I am? At least I'm around Horeb, the holy place. Yes, sir. I'm around the church. I'm doing do this. I'm performing what I gotta do. But God say, what I have for you and the places in the spirit you gotta go. Church, mm -hmm. 
to go to church that was supposed to be a place you can't help nobody. That's right. That's right. All right. That's right. Hello. Yes. Watch this. Once I prayed for him, he sold it up. Mm -hmm. Church folk looking funny and strange. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling everybody, God is moving, telling church folk, y'all go and bring in the harvest. Bring folks from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Church folks so familiar with, I'm just going to the tent. I, I know what the man of God said, but I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. The next night, gang members, come on, yes, alcoholics, prostitutes, and the man I had prayed for the night before, the drunkard, yes, sir. he was back. Mm -hmm. So I saw all of these folk, gang members wearing their different colors. And I asked those folk, I said, how did you get here? How did you know about this tent meeting over here? They said, John told me about it. All right. John was the former alcoholic. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Can I have some real folk? Yeah. Right. John had went out and told everybody that he knew. Okay. From the streets. Yes. Are y'all listening? Yes. And I said, John, you came last night. What brought you? He said, John broke John. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, 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 What's going to happen to the church? If the church ready for what's about to come in, yes. you are so in your familiar
Okay, okay. Yeah. The higher yes, sir. it goes. Yes, sir. I know I can't finish all this. Right. We gotta come back to the next service. Somebody say the higher, the, higher. the spaceship will go. Yeah. Things start falling off. Yes, God is saying the reason you can't get what he got now. Cause you ain't ready to come up. Cause you ain't ready to let some stuff. spoke to in a very revelatory way is a person he had to call. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes, Lord. When he spoke to Elijah, when Elijah had to deal with 400 and then the next 400 backslidden preachers, uh -huh. 800 some preachers, backslidden preachers that Elijah had to deal with. And God said, now you can't deal with these preachers where you are. Amen. Right. Amen. What are you saying, God? No, you can't deal with these preachers where you are. But there's some stuff I hear that these preachers are doing. You don't have no confrontation. You don't have no power to deal with it because you're at the same level where they are. So if you're going to deal with these preachers, Elijah, you got to come out to Mount Carmel. Because on Mount Carmel, when I bring you up, you ain't just dealing with them by yourself, but the fire. In Revelation, mm -hmm. the Bible said, John, yes, God. they couldn't kill him. That's right. Oh, in a pot of oil. God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They threw him in the oil, and the oil couldn't kill him. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell a neighbor, say, there's nothing in the earth for going to take you out. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what to do with you. All right. So the Bible said they got together yes, sir. and exiled him. That's yes, right. Yes. To an island called Patmos. Yes, sir. When he got over to when he got to the island, they left him there. Yes, yeah. sir. So y'all don't understand. Sometimes when God wanna bring you up, uh -huh. he had to move you from around somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, I moved around some folks. <laughs> and look what God did. And look what he said this When he took him to the hour of happiness, yes. God said, Well, what I'm about to take you. You go into a place now you've never been. Yeah. He's a first of all, oh, yeah. I need you to write some stuff down. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. That's right. I need you to be my secretary for a minute. All right, yeah. all right, all right, all right. Yes, sir. And I need you to write things past, yeah. Yeah. things present, yeah. and things to come. Yeah. When John got to being the secretary, yeah. that was one level in his life. Yeah. Then the Bible said, God told John, John, Look up. Come on up from there. Some of y'all been at that church level in y'all life too long. And God is telling you, come on up now. It's time for you to have a greater anointing on your life. Greater power, greater revelations. Show glory somebody. Tell the neighbors that you have dwelt long enough in that spiritual level in your life. Standing on your feet.